In this video, we're going to survey some of the standard primary processes associated with n pi star and pi pi star excited states, these very common excited states of organic chromophores such as the carbonyl and alkene. And our goal here really is to keep it very general. We're going to see specific examples of reactions of photoexcited carbonyls and alkenes in future videos. And what we want to do here is understand the possibilities for their excited states in very general terms. And so we're going to look at the situation from a bird's eye view, talk about very general types of photoreactivity, and try to connect structure to reactivity in a very generalizable way, starting from these NBO electron configurations of the excited state, N pi star and pi pi star, and understanding how these give us insight into the possible reactivity patterns of these excited states. And let's begin with the pi pi star state. This excited state is typical for carbonyls, alkenes, and aromatics. And pi pi star states have singlet and triplet spin states that can often behave very differently. So the singlet pi pi star state undergoes a variety of different reactions and has qualitatively different behavior from triplet pi pi star states. The singlet pi pi star state is often best thought of as Witter ionic in nature. And the idea there is that these resonance forms with negative and positive charges, these charge separated resonance forms are quite important in singlet pi pi star states. And that Zwitter ionic character gives us insight into their reactivity. So they very often undergo pericyclic reactions, concerted pericyclic reactions, such as cycloadditions, cycloeliminations, electrocyclic reactions, and sigmatropic rearrangements. But they also engage in ionic reactions, and these may or may not involve electron transfer. These may be things like additions, nucleophilic or electrophilic additions, rearrangements, this is very common, of aromatic pi pi star states, and of course electron transfers. And finally, a very important general reaction of the singlet pi pi star state is double bond twisting or cis-trans isomerization. We'll also call this EZ isomerization. And the key here is to recognize that in promoting an electron to the pi star orbital, we have weakened the pi bond in a very real way. And so rotation about this central carbon-carbon bond in the excited state becomes much easier than it is in the ground state. Triplet pi pi star states are very much diradicaloid in nature. And the most important resonance form for these excited states by far is one that puts unpaired electrons on the two carbons that were linked via the pi bond in the ground state structure. One of those electrons is very much higher in energy than the other, if we think back to the SOMO picture of the excited state, the orbital occupancy picture. And so electron transfers can happen. This can include both accepting and donating an electron, because this is both a stronger reducing agent and stronger oxidizing agent than the ground state. Radical reactions are extremely common from triplet pi pi star states, and these can really involve any sort of general radical reaction with single electron flow, so abstraction of an atom from another molecule, abstraction of a hydrogen is very common here. Addition to an unsaturated functional group, this creates a new radical in a pi-containing molecule that reacts with one of these radical electrons. Radicaloid rearrangements, say bond cleavages that result in the repositioning of a radical in a more stable position or something along those lines, and homolytic bond cleavages. Here again, the radical electron is promoting homolytic bond cleavage to place the radical character on a different atom with the cleavage of a bond. These abstractions, additions, and eliminations, which we can really think of the bond cleavage as a kind of elimination process in many cases, are typical of radicals, and the diradicaloid nature of the triplet pi pi star state means we should expect this kind of reactivity from these excited states. And cis-trans isomerization is also important in the triplet pi pi star state of alkenes. And this can be shown through sensitization experiments. And I should mention, by the way, that this excited state can typically only be generated for alkenes via sensitization. So these are generally things we should watch out for when we know we're dealing with a pi pi star state. For example, when we know we're irradiating at a wavelength that corresponds to the energy difference between, say, the S1 state or the T1 state of an alkene. Now, N pi star states are quite a bit different. They are essentially diradicaloid in nature regardless of whether they are singlet or triplet. 
And the key to understanding the possibilities for an n pi star state is to appreciate which orbital is involved. Is it the n orbital or is it the pi star orbital? The pi star orbital is nucleophilic. And we talked about why this is previously. If we look at, for example, the orbital occupation diagram for this excited state, we have one electron in the pi star orbital that is higher in energy than the one electron in the n orbital. So the pi star orbital, the electron within it, is nucleophilic. And so reactions initiated by or associated with the pi star orbital involve reaction with electrophiles, combination of this excited state with an electrophile. And the types of reactions here, it's an unpaired electron, right? So we should expect radical reactivity being associated with this pi star orbital, atom abstractions of electrophilic bonds, radical additions primarily to electrophilic functionality, such as unsaturated carbonyl compounds, and beta cleavage, which is reminiscent of beta elimination, but involves only a single electron rather than an electron pair promoting the elimination process. And so here again, we're seeing these three really general typical reactivity patterns of radicals in atom abstraction, addition, and elimination processes. The pi star electron is relatively high in energy, so electron transfer is possible, and specifically reduction by this excited state is possible, or electron donation. That's a nucleophilic electron on the carbonyl carbon in this excited state, and so it will tend to be donated to things that are readily reduced. The other side of the coin, of course, is in initiated reactions, and the key there, again returning to our SOMO orbital diagram, is that the n orbital is electrophilic. It's got a low energy hole, and so the n orbital will tend to be associated with reactions with nucleophiles. And it's an unpaired electron, and so radical reactions are, again, still possible, but they'll be different qualitatively because, for example, now in the atom abstraction, we're thinking about abstracting a nucleophilic atom, something like the H and a CH bond, for example, rather than an electrophilic atom that we saw over here. And atom abstractions of CH by the n orbital are an important and very common process, for example, of the singlet or triplet state for carbonyls. Radical additions, again possible. Now we're thinking, though, about addition to a nucleophilic pi system, for example, a simple aliphatic alkene. And we can also envision elimination processes associated with this radical electron on the oxygen. And these are referred to as alpha cleavage in the case of carbonyls because the bond that breaks, which is actually beta to the unpaired electron, is alpha with respect to the carbonyl carbon. But at the end of the day, this is an elimination process where the sigma bond that breaks is really nucleophilic, is, is really electron rich in nature. So we'll see alpha cleavage in more detail. It involves the cleavage of, for example, either this bond here or this bond here. And the idea primarily is that this is associated with nucleophilic reactivity of the sigma bond and the electrophilic nature of the n orbital on oxygen. In terms of redox behavior, we think of the n orbital as being associated with electron acceptance in photo-induced electron transfer processes. It's a low energy orbital containing a hole. This can accept an additional electron from an electron donor and thereby the carbonyl gets reduced and the electron donor gets oxidized. And so just to sum up, with the carbonyl in pi star state, we tend to see less dependence on the spin multiplicity. It's not non-existent, but as a general qualitative rule, we can say that the singlet and triplet in pi star states react similarly. And in both, we see radical reactions because of the unpaired nature of the electrons in the pi star and n orbitals. The pi star orbital is nucleophilic. This leads to electron donation and radical reactions where we think of that radical as a nucleophilic radical. And on the other side of the coin, we have the n orbital, which is an electrophilic orbital. So we think of radical reactions involving electrophilic reactivity of this radical electron on oxygen as well as electron acceptance at oxygen. And notice how these general reactivity patterns really turn the conventional understanding of the carbonyl group on its head. This looks backwards relative to what we expect. And that's an important point to notice. We typically think of the oxygen in a carbonyl in its ground state as nucleophilic and the carbon as electrophilic. But photo excitation to form the n pi star state has literally 
completely turn that upside down with the carbonyl carbon nucleophilic and the carbonyl oxygen electrophilic. This is very common of excited state reactivity. It's something we've seen already in talking about elevating the importance of polar resonance forms and very often resonance forms that are sort of backwards or, or counterintuitive relative to our chemical intuition for the reactivity of ground states. This is one of the powerful things about organic photochemistry. We can use photo excitation to enable reactions that would be impossible from a polarity perspective in the ground state. Before closing this video, I want to bring a bit more structure to the processes we've laid down here in the, from the n-pi star state by noting that each of these can be associated with an orbital interaction, either involving the pi star orbital or the n-orbital of the excited state. And the idea here is that we're going to imagine a filled empty orbital interaction and one of the orbitals involved will be a SOMO, so partially filled or, or partially empty. And this orbital overlap from filled to empty is what drives the primary process, what really gets it going. And it allows us to systematize this, to reduce it to an even smaller number of fundamental processes. And so, for example, atom abstraction is initiated by the pi star orbital. The pi star orbital is nucleophilic, and so the key orbital interaction here is pi star to sigma star, the empty sigma star orbital associated with the bond undergoing the abstraction. For example, a CH bond, or in the case of an electrophilic atom abstraction, a carbon bromine, carbon iodine bond, something along those lines. Radical additions are pi star to pi star interactions where the accepting pi star is associated with that electrophilic pi system, and eliminations are pi star to sigma star processes where the sigma bond that's breaking is now not external to the molecule but internal. When we talk about n-initiated reactions, well now the n-orbital is electrophilic and it's actually undergoing the electron acceptance. It's playing the empty role in the orbital interaction in all three of these cases. And the electron donor is what distinguishes these three processes. So when we talk about atom abstraction involving the electrophilic n orbital, we're talking about donation from an electron rich or filled sigma orbital to the electrophilic n orbital. When we talk about radical additions, we're talking about the orbital interaction between a filled pi orbital in the nucleophile and the half-filled electrophilic n orbital in the excited state. And when we talk about alpha cleavage, we're similarly talking about a sigma to n interaction, but now the sigma orbital is not external to the molecule, as in the case of an atom abstraction, but is internal. And there's a, a pi type overlap here rather than a sigma type overlap of the sigma and n orbitals that we see in the atom abstraction case. So you can see from these red orbital interactions that we have reduced these sort of complicated terminologies to relatively simple orbital interactions that we can visualize and standardize across diverse specific examples of reactions.